Hey guys, welcome to episode three of how to reset a cheap arch top guitar neck that you bought at a yard sale for. Go ahead and lie. You know you paid 400. You're going to say you paid 20. I know. It's okay. I'm not a priest. I cannot absolve you of your sins. Anyway, in episode two, which is in the playlist right up there, right about now, we made a steamer out of a West Bend two and a half quart teapot and about $7 worth of scrap apparatus that you can get from your local Ace Hardware store. Anyway, we need to make the Padna of this thing, which is the jig that will hold and restrain the said the prep arch top guitar so we can do a few scientific Dr. Frankenstein things and get the neck off, reset it, get the angle right. It completely ruined the value of it. You need to see episode one where it was called Face the Facts. Yeah, you want to know what you're getting into before you spend $27 and about the $40 we are going to spend now making a neck removal jig. Let's hit the bench. All right, let's get started. We have a 24 inch by 24 inch piece of plywood here. Now, this is not chipboard, it's not particle board, it's good plywood and its strength is gonna become important later. Now, I've noticed a bad part about this stuff, if there is one, is it chips off along the edges. So you gotta sand it. We're gonna end up painting this thing at the end and branding it and everything will work out great that way. But first thing you wanna do is go and find the center on each side. Again, it's 24 by 24. So I come to the middle, it's 12 there. It's 12 down here. And it is 12 along these edges. Now, you'll notice I've marked, the mark here doesn't go all the way through. It's got the center mark on another one here. And this one goes all the way through because we're going to end up cutting this one in half by the time we're done. We're going to need two pieces of wood to make our form. Okay, so we're going to do this prep guitar on the neck reset this time. And so what I need to do is I need to figure out how to line this up. And I want to trace around the guitar. So I've got the center point front and back and I know where the strap button is on this thing so that'll be the back part that finds me the center and then the middle of the heel of the neck I want to put that right there and that right there and then we want to trace around this right wrong this is not the biggest guitar we're ever going to do we might have bigger guitars so i if i make this for a smaller guitar and then put some jumbo on here it won't work as well so what we want to do is we want to lay this out first with the biggest guitar we happen to have around and i have a i have an epiphone pro 1 VS. Now it is a flat top. It doesn't have F holes. Don't let that alarm you. But I am going to line this up here. This is a big guitar. Line it up in the back. And where I need this tracing to end up is somewhere where the waist of this guitar is, right here where it curves in. So I'm going to take a pencil and I am going to trace this down to the middle line there. Let me reach across here and go down to the middle line. There we go. It looks like that. Now, I can take the guitar I'm going to do and put it in there and we can see that that tracing is plenty big. One thing we want to pay attention to is this part right here is going to have something that comes through it right here that pushes up. 
So this part is going to be clamped down. There's going to be something here that we can screw up that will push the neck off. But everything will fit here okay. Especially if I line it up, everything fits inside of there. So, good. Oh, I wanted to tell you something while we're here. These Epiphone PV1 guitars, if you put heavy strings on the bridge, what will happen is it will crack the bridge right there. You see it? I've seen a ton of these. These are good guitars. They sound great. Big body guitar. But if you put too big a strings on it, that happens every time. Now, I'm going to fix this and glue it. But, yeah, just a word to the wise. You'll see these on the market for 50 bucks, And if you see one like that, come back here and look. That's exactly what happened. Okay, so I'm going to want to be able to clamp this to one above it by the way what's on the other side will be the part that flips over here of course we're going to cut this on a table saw but it will be the part that clamps up here so to clamp it we need some ears might call them pick and eyes or something like that they need to be coming out here about three inches and i want them to be about as wide as a cigar box guitar neck so Probably three inches from the body would be good. Anyway, I need those here where it curves, and I need them here where they start to curve, like so. I'm going to get this measured out. You don't want them too far up here. You want them back a little bit here. And one, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. There are my ears. I call them pick and eyes because if you're around cranes, you end up with these tabs that are welded onto something and they got holes in them. So we're going to put a, a hole in these that allows you to adjust everything. But anyway, so this is what this looks like. I need to take this out now. I am going to cut it in half with a table saw. And then I think when I am using the table saw, these don't need to be any longer than this. So I'll just when I get out there, cut these off here. And then I'm just going to go along in here and cut all this off, make sure this is nice and rounded. And when I get that done, I will be back. All right, are you ready to be completely and utterly disamazed? Look at this puppy. Look at that. You see that? Everything's cut off long enough. Um, yeah, you want to sand down the edges. Some of these slivers that come off of this stuff are terrible, believe me. But that's what we ended up with. Now, the hero of the day was this mini belt sander. I've told you about this one for carving out necks uh, on cigar boxes, smoothing things out, uh, cutting out the metal uh, pocket for... A neck on a coffee can but this thing right here when you're using a bandsaw because I cut this out with a bandsaw I traced everything out and you're having to make curves and all this kind of thing so you can come along and straighten everything out and do the corners this is the best deal ever next to chick flick teal something else very important came out of that part of the project and that is this this is the other half of the board remember now i'm going to take this and i'm going to make sure that i got the center lined up i need another center line here because this one got cut off let's go here let's see if i can do this 12. okay here we go you know, this is a fancy yardstick. Beverly Hardware Company. They used to have a hardware store on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. Can you believe that? Okay, so we're just going to line that up right there. And I am going to want to put this top on here. Except there's one thing different. I'm not going to need this on the top one because everything is going to have to clear the neck is going to come off there plus i'm going to need a pocket right here where the fingerboard sits let me grab a guitar here if i'm pushing this up and this is clamped 
over the top, I'm gonna need a space like this. So when I push on the bottom here with something and it comes up, this part where the fingerboard is on the lower part of the neck is gonna have to come out. So and then I'm gonna bash it on that fancy light I got up there that flickers like it's 1927. Anyway, instead of trying to figure out to put this up here and do this, I'm just gonna line the center marks up right here like so put them on the side a little bit so i can see that there line everything up there we go and i am just going to trace this and i'm going to cut this one out too and remember i'll be cutting this off of the top one i don't need this heel thing but instead of trying to figure out what to do and set things back the right distance or whatever I will just cut this off straight but I'm going to need to figure out when I cut this out again how far will the fingerboard come down off the center and then I can just cut a slot in here and leave that open I'll get all that done because I think this is one of those projects that once you see it you will believe it it's kind of like when you heard about my channel, and then when you saw me, yeah, believe it, son. Okay, let me show you what I did here. I want to pull the guitar back up. I want to make sure you understand this. The top part of this will need to be sitting up here. This will need to be exposed. So I've got to have something sitting out here that will allow us, when we push this, this not to be obstructed. So, I hope you don't hear guitars crashing. So, I measured five inches from here. I've never seen the end of a fingerboard more than a couple inches extending over the top of the soundboard, which is the top part of the guitar. And I measured two inches each way. So, even the widest fingerboard that we've ever seen will fit there. So I'm going to notch this out now and cut the rest of it out, again, taking the heel portion off and cutting it. I'm going to go get that done. You will be, again, completely and utterly disamazed. Maybe not so much because you've seen this brilliance already. Okay, let's catch up. So this is the bottom here. We would put the guitar on here like so we want to make sure that the heel of the neck right there is going to be over here because there's going to be a hole in here and a threaded scrap apparatus and we put that there like that and then this will sit up on top like this of course the strings won't be there but it will sit there like so now we're gonna to have to put some bolts in here and on the bottom part the, the nuts and wing nuts and whatever, uh, these will need some room. So we'll take basically a neck board off as a cigar box guitar and pull that back to where it rounds off and get that up so you've got room to do this. But this is kind of the idea. So these will clamp down. Um, of course, we're going to have to put some padding and stuff in here. You want to remember that this part is arched, so if you don't pad this right and you start cranking this down, you'll crush the arch top and crack it. This works probably better on flat top guitars, but not to worry. We've got some foam and stuff we can put here. The idea is you're not trying to um, clamp it down so hard. You're just holding it and stabilizing it and heating it up enough to where when you push up on this, it pops off. So I am going to put the slots in here, um, which is basically, there's a couple ways to do this. You could do it with a router, but you can drill a hole here. You can drill a hole here, and then you can take a jigsaw and cut it out till it's got a slot. So the idea is we want things to be, move and be adjustable so it will fit virtually any guitar. I got some more sanding to do here, but let me take a few more steps and catch up with you on what the hardware is going to look like. All right, let me show you a couple little tricks here before we move on. We took these two parts and clamped them together. 
and then lined everything up and took a pilot bit after measuring where we're going to want the holes here because there's going to be slots here that you can move things back and forth. We'll get to that, but I come off this edge about three quarters of an inch here and three inches here, drilled some pilot holes and put screws in here, put these together, and then I went to the bandsaw and subsequently to this thing this mini belt sander again you've got to have one of these cut cigar box gu guitar necks out coffee can necks license plates whatever you want these things are handy but we did all the finish work on this with these bolted together now I'm going to drill some bigger holes here and then we're going to take once those two holes are drilled one there and one there all the way through here we'll sand this down and then we'll take a jigsaw and make these slots where you can adjust things back and forth okay guys we have a bag of parts our all thread and our tubing that will protect the guitar from the all thread so we're going to kind of think things ahead now we have these screwed together and i'm going to drill a couple of holes here uh, one uh, here like so and one here and we're going to do that in each place where I have holes that are going to hold the all thread and we're going to make a slot and we're, and we're going to make that slot come all the way out to the edge so this will be open to here now what I'm going to do is I've taken from the edge of the hole I've drilled here and come here and over here and we're going to do the same thing here and here and if I do this while they're still bolted together I'm going to get everything matching on both the top and the bottom parts of the jig so I'm going to lay that out like that now what I don't want to do is go through here and, and bust all the way through and blow out everything on the back end so I'm going to drill a little bit both ways like so you see that and then we'll we'll end up countersinking all this stuff when we're done like so but I'm marking out notice I got the clutch set really low and then we're just going to mark to the edge of the hole in all areas here and that will let us cut our slot really easily on the bandsaw I'm going to tell you the splinters coming off of these this plywood is terrible they're very small they work their way in and if you're one of those people that plays guitar which I don't worry about yeah it makes it a mess so watch along as I systematically try to get as many of these done before I take the final screw out okay I wanted to show you something real quick here um, I took this to the bandsaw and as I showed you before, I drilled a hole all the way through that was uh, with a bit big enough to let the hole accept the all thread. And I drilled, after I drilled the hole, I marked the edge of the hole and went here, 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 and here. And then I took it to the bandsaw and cut along that mark. And this came out. Now everything is still bolted together. And I ended up with this pretty cool thing, which allows us to slip the all thread in and make our adjustments and set up without pulling off the tubing and everything else that's going to be on here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of these out so I end up with this. Okay, let's catch up a little bit. We have these slots cut. We used... Um, the band saw you could just as well use a flush cut saw um, you can get these holes wallered out with a big bit you could use a countersink tool um, 
we flattened out the insides of these with this big bastard file. Yeah, I have. It's not my name. It's okay if you call me that, though. I know most of you do. Anyway, the slots are going to house these things, which is all thread with surgical tubing and fender washers and these fancy brass wing nuts because here's kind of the way this works. The guitar fits in here, the heel goes up here, and these go here. You see that? And then we just tighten them down. Now, I'll give you a couple of hints here. When you're making these things and you're using all thread, care how you cut it, a hacksaw, a chop saw, a band saw that has a metal blade on it. Don't use your, your, uh, your wood bladed band saw for that. You could use a sawzall that had a metal blade. You could use a jigsaw that had a metal blade on it. But when you cut all thread, these threads are gonna get marred up. So before here, and after where the cut's gonna be, you're gonna want nuts on there so you can get rid of the marred up part by threading it with this. So always do that. Um, next thing to remember is when you are going to smooth some things around here, when you are going to uh, be working with wing nuts under here, like so, you see that? You don't want this to be flat. You want this to be up a little bit. So on the bottom part here, I have drawn out. This is the bottom of the bottom. I have drawn out the center. Of course, we put this notch in here so the center knows where it is all the time. We've taken a couple of neck boards, and I've marked the center off, and I've also drawn a couple reference reference lines so we can glue those right there and I'm going to use a pilot hole bit and the countersink tool these are awesome and we're going to screw this board down after we glue it so I'll have two of these here like so you see that and the reason I have that is because when I'm putting these on, I'm putting them on backwards here so you can see it, there will be enough room for the wing nut to clear and be under here in this. So that's kind of the deal there. So let me get all this put together. I am going to paint this, and I think you're going to be completely and utterly disamazed, and then we'll get back to what we do with this heel part right here. Oh, one more thing. If I didn't make it really, really clear, this surgical tubing or swamp cooler tubing or it's probably the same thing except in a hospital you pay $1,000 a foot, pay $0.79 cents a foot any other time. This stuff goes over the threads. Now, I cut a piece that's, this is 8 inches long and this is 4 inches long because you're going to be using this to take up slack so you may not need this to be four inches long you need to be three inches long or whatever but this sticks out further than the thread so if it's working against the guitar this will protect the surface of the guitar don't forget that um, 79 cents a foot is a cheap way to avoid an expensive lesson okay you can kind of catch what's going on here now um, this goes here, this picks up, the guitar sits in, there's three more of these. I'm going to paint this uh, and we're going to coat the, the sides that go up against the guitar with cork paper once the paint is on and we're going to use an adhesive to make sure that that stays on. But now is the point where we've got to start thinking about drilling a hole here and putting one of these in so we can turn this up and it comes up and there'll be something in between the end of the bolt and the heel of the guitar. So to kind of give you an idea what's going on here, I'm going to use what's called a T-knot. Now I use a different size of these to put 
uh, license plates on the guitars I make. Uh, but this is threaded, and you got to kind of look ahead here and ask yourself, do I want to put this up here like so and run this up from the bottom? Well, the answer is no, because you want to be working against the thread. So we'll put this upside down on the bottom. This is the side of this that will be towards the guitar. And here's those feet that I put on so we can get some clearance here. Let me catch this up here. See the wing not there. You put that there and that stays below that. You see that. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this here. We're going to drill a hole through this and then we'll screw this on. It's got three holes that we put small screws in. But then what happens is when you're turning this, it's working in a way that pushes this up and it, it works for you. If you were the other way, there would be the possibility it would come out. So we're going to mount this right here, which means, again, we'll dr drill the hole here and then some smaller holes. And I may take a Forstner bit and sink that down into there where it's flush. Right, we're putting the finishing touches on everything here to put paint on it. And, um, you know, things aren't just about appearance. There's always functionality when it comes to appearance. So I want to share a couple tricks with you. First, see this? Yeah, this is Chick Flick Teal Brush. Yeah, this right here, it doesn't just happen. You need this. Next, when you're going to paint something... You want to make sure that the wood is acclimated to the right temperature, which is kind of like room temperature. Hopefully that's somewhere around 70 degrees. If you're old, it might seem like 80. And when your grandchildren are losing weight, sweating, that might be an indicator to you. But whatever your definition of room temperature is, hopefully, again, you're not in Yatutsk, Russia, but... Room temperature, get the wood at room temperature, and then take your paint and soak it in hot water. Look at that. You know what this is going to mean. Anyway, soak the paint in hot water. That way, it all sticks. Now, let's get this outside and put a paint job on it before we put our protective covering on it. Always use a protective covering. Ooh, handy dandy right there. Okay, this right here, let me, let me do this properly. This right here is a Chick Flick Teal Sunburst. You can't beat that. Now, 
this is the part that we're going to be looking at up on top. This part goes towards the guitar. We want to make sure that there's nothing on here, any debris. But what we're going to need to do is protect the finish on the guitar. So we are going to put this here face down. Now, we aren't going to need to put cork paper. Oh, by the way, this is cork paper. It's adhesive. It has adhesive on the back. But we're going to do an additional coating of adhesive. But what we want to do is take our trusty Sharpie and we want to go and trace this like so. And we're going to make one for each of the two respective parts that are going to be towards the guitar. You see that there? So I'm going to cut that out now. I don't need it to come right up to the edge of here. I want to sit back a little bit and that way it won't fray out from being in contact here. But I'm going to cut this out and show you what's next. Oh, almost forgot. It's critical that when you're cutting this out, you use chick flick teal scissors. Must have. All right, guys, there we go. This is the top part of the jig that sits up against the top of the soundboard of the guitar because the fretboard is right here. So you can see I'm back from the edge a little bit. You may want to prune, prune. You can tell I'm a plant person. Cut this corner back just a tad more. Um, and then this cork paper has adhesive on it already. But... I'm going to take this outside and give it a quick coat of this craft bond that you use for scrapbooking and things like that. We'll put that on there. That'll make some for it to be extra sticky and we won't have to worry about that. So I'm going to do that with this one and the bottom section and I'll catch up with you in a few. All right, look at that. Nice. All we have to do now is mount our T-knot and we're gonna this is threaded it goes into this scrapparatus it's gonna allow us to put some pressure on the neck once we get steamed loose but we're gonna mount our T-knot right there like so drill some pilot holes take our chick flick teal screws three of them and pop that into place and we are getting close all right I know I have put a lot of emphasis on this t-nut here but the deal is, is rather than having something screw up in there and, and worry about it, this is coming in from the bottom, this threads, this will be what pushes our neck off and gives us gentle pressure applied relentlessly once we get the neck cut loose. You see that there? So as the neck starts to cut loose, of course we'll put a shim in here that has a hole cut halfway through it so this will sit here and as we heat the neck up we just turn this and this is how it breaks loose but there we go let's get a guitar in this thing all right guys let's have a look we um we have a little piece of cork paper here we have our screw ready to go flush with here i'm going to put that there we're going to put an arch top up on here. We're going to line the heel up with the edge. The body is at the edge. The heel is right here because this is the part that will come off. Everything is padded here. You can see that. Take a piece of these old jeans, put those up there, and now we're going to flip this up here. Ooh, isn't that magnificent it show sure is anyway put that up there like this oh i put thread protectors on the ends of the threads and i just put these on here like so 
tighten it up a little bit so it's not moving but not enough to get it where it's pulling the other side down we got four of these there we go now I put that those pieces of wood on the bottom so we've got room underneath here Let's see if I can get to the other side without messing everything up there we go need to open this up just a tad bear with me there we go tighten that up like so And we've got the last one here. To make sure this, these protectors are in the right place. There we go. Now it's just a matter of getting the misfiring dirt bike out of the shot. And just tightening these down um, you want to remember that these are arch tops you're gonna to put some foam or whatever you need in here this is not doesn't need to be clamped down to the point where you're cracking the arch top right here but just some padding will work the main thing is you're getting enough pressure here that once we drill this out and heat this up and start screwing this up once it's in place we'll be able to stand this up and do whatever we want with it but that right there is what we're after bright lights baby gonna set my soul oh hey we're on yeah okay so wasn't that easy look at this thing i got about 40 bucks into this maximum a uh, piece of wood and some clamps and you know the more I look at this the more it reminds me of one of them cheesy halter tops from 1974 do you see it now all we need is Chevy van by Terry Jacks that's right don't stump me on music Terry Jacks Chevy van I'm gonna give you a link to it right up there right about now and it will stick in your head, it will rot in your brain, and that way you can hate me almost as much as I hate myself, because every time I think about you, I hate myself. Okay, back to reality. We are gonna take this now, since we have the restraint device on it, easy. We are going to steam the neck off of this in the next episode, so, hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, you've delayed yourself a lot of punishment, but go ahead and do that. The ones of you that are out there, that are still out there, God bless you, get a life. But anyway, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I will see you next time when we pop the neck off of this, the prep archtop guitar.